Well, let's get right into it. Here they are in no particular order. My 10 reasons that I think you should consider using Rhino. So reason number one, widespread adoption. Now, while Rhino may not have the same volume of users as something like, I don't know, say AutoCAD, it is still used by a very wide range of design disciplines, including but not limited to architecture, product design, landscape design, automotive, jewelry, the list goes on and on. So no matter what your design discipline happens to be, there are going to be people and projects that you can model your own work after and learn from their successes and failures. And speaking of AutoCAD, reason number two is Rhino's similarity to it. If you know AutoCAD, or even if you're just passingly familiar with it, the whole idea of command line operation is going to feel very familiar. Lots of the commands are identical and making the transition is pretty easy. And that segues nicely into point number three, which is that Rhino is an excellent 3D and 2D documentation tool all in one software package. Now, while tools like Revit or SolidWorks might present great options in terms of their ability to document designs really rapidly and parametrically, I think that Rhino is the nicest medium for me in terms of design freedom while still being a capable documentation tool. It might require a little more manual input than some of those other programs I just mentioned, but I think that the freedom that it affords you is worth that trade-off. Not only that, but Rhino plays so well with other programs that it can become part of a modeling or design pipeline as opposed to just a standalone program. So you can kind of center a modeling workflow around it or use it as part of a larger production pipeline. Which brings me to number four, which is its large number of file input and output options. Rhino both reads and writes a ton of file formats. The list is quite extensive. I highly recommend that you check it out and see if Rhino might play nicely with another package you happen to know already or one you're interested in working with in the future. Even if you don't like working in Rhino, sometimes it can be a great software to export work to if only to change that file to another file format you can work with. If something happens to be easy to edit in one software and then another, but they don't talk directly to one another, Rhino can serve as the go-between. All right, reason number five, there are a tremendous number of plugins, many of them available for free to make Rhino even more powerful than it already is. If you need to work with new kinds of files or new kinds of data, there's probably a plugin that someone has written for that. Like we mentioned before, Rhino is adopted across a wide range of design disciplines, meaning not only is someone likely to have encountered your problem before, but it's almost equally likely that they've written a plugin to solve it. Check sites like foodforrhino.com, search for your problem, there's probably already an answer out there. Which leads me naturally to point number six, which is the support community, and as far as software goes, it is excellent. The Rhino forums are a great place to ask other users, and occasionally the software developers themselves, about issues you're encountering. Very few other software companies have their employees in such direct contact with their customers, the developer's genuine interest in solving customer problems is one of the things that endears me to that company so much and makes me gladly say, just take my money, please. All right, so speaking of money, you knew we had to get to it sometime, right? Number seven is cost. Now, Rhino is not necessarily cheap, but compared to other products of a similar caliber that do what it does, it's also not that expensive. Not only that, but McNeil has also somewhat bucked the trend of the software industry at large and chosen to still offer perpetual licenses to its customers as opposed to the rental or subscription model that a lot of other software companies have chosen. If you use your software every single day for a long time, this definitely pays off in the end. In addition, if you're a student or a teacher, take a look at their educational discounts. They're significant and they treat their customers really, really well. And speaking of the subscription model that seems to be standard these days, reason number eight, I would say, is the product release cycle, which is very, very infrequent, actually, and I think this is a great thing. It allows the developers to really work out as much as they possibly can in between versions of Rhino, and they don't make you pay for a new version with marginally upgraded features every year. In addition, all license holders have the benefit of access to the work in progress or beta version of the next generation of the software until that's released. 
Even then, they give you 60 more days of access to the full unabridged version of that software once it's released. So you get a long time to play with new technology as it's being developed. And then even once it's released, you still have access to that just based on that initial purchase you made. And these long product cycles allow the community to really inform the development of the software. If you become part of a group of people who's particularly passionate about a group of features and you want to see them grow, you can make that case in the forums and you're actually listened to. All right, and reason number nine, or at least I think that's where we are in this list, is Rhino's capacity for parametric modeling enabled by Grasshopper. And if we were making this list in order of importance for yours truly, this would certainly be much higher on the list. Grasshopper has made Rhino an incredibly powerful tool and it's benefited from all the things that Rhino has. A very, very vibrant community that has given it feedback, active plugin development by that community. You really can't beat it. It's been an incredible tool, at least in my experience. And I think it's a great introduction to programming for a lot of people who might be uncomfortable with sort of traditional command line scripting and things like that. It's an amazing, amazing tool set that's just kind of gravy on top of Rhino itself. And finally, number 10, last but certainly not least, is Mac and PC compatibility. Now, a number of differences do still exist between those versions, but that gap is closing all the time. In addition to that, if you're just starting out, those differences won't be as apparent to you as someone who uses the tool day in, day out and expects things to be where they are. So I hope this list has given you something or a few things to think about, maybe just entertained you at the very least. While I don't expect that everyone is going to have the same level of enthusiasm for the software that I do, I do think it's a great piece of software that anyone who's doing any serious 3D modeling should look into. So if you found today's video helpful, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like it in the future. And if you have a friend or a coworker who you think would benefit from it as well, do me and them a favor and share the channel with them. Thanks everyone, happy modeling. Thank you.